Yes. Okay. Cool, cool then. Um, all right, guys. So um, I'll, I'll probably just go through the agenda for what this webinar is supposed to be. Um, so first off, uh, my name is Alain Capita. Um, Organizer um, for Judicial Lagos. Um, yeah, so, so ideally we would have, we should have had this event in person, right? But then due to sort of like the um, coronavirus stuff, yeah, uh, I mean, we sort of like had to look for another option, right? So, so yeah, so, so here we are. Um, so, so basically, I'll just sort of like take you guys through what this event on Zoom is supposed to look like, and then, uh, and that's just sort of like one for 15 minutes. Then, we'll have Femtai will take us through um, a session for introduction to five years, where it will sort of like show us what five years is, what five years can do for you. How developers sort of like use libraries and stuff, yeah. Then up next will be Manuel Bakari, um, who's going to sort of like take us through the five years for our lab. Um, that should run for one hour. Then, yeah, then then I'll sort of like show you guys how the Google Dev profile stuff works, and then sort of end the end. So to us, and I mean, we will sort of like look into and everything before to us. I mean, we're looking to when our 13 years and But then, yeah. So what's next? No, yes, this guy. So, um, so today, um, first off, everyone who is so sort of like supposed to be a part of this event is um, expected to rather advise to join the global five storage and Google group. And the reason is um, so so the Google Dev platform is currently in beta and and and, and it seems sort of like not um, giving every single person access. But then if you join this general five storage and Google group, you would have the email address with which you join with will have access to sign up on google.dev platform. And if you do not sign up, you can't have access to private study jam resources or create, or you can't create a, um, what's it called? You can't you, 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 you can, like create a, a, a google.dev profile. And, and, and if you don't create a google.dev profile, um, we sort of like cannot, cannot see your progress or the labs you've completed, the replace you've completed, and we sort of like as opposed to give people who completed the playlist, the playlist and the code lab, we sort of like as opposed to send shares to them. So yeah, yeah. So it's really important that you sort of like um, join this group. Um, so first, the, the code lab. Yeah. So so um, the man of our is going to take us through the code lab. I just wanted to show you guys. That that's sort of like the first thing that we're going to you know get our hands dirty with. Yeah. Then next up is the playlist. So no one is going to take us through the playlist during this particular webinar. Um, everyone is supposed to sort of like go back to to complete this playlist. So you sort of like want to keep that link, sort of like write it somewhere or open the link already somewhere. Yeah. So I'll I'll, I'll I mean you, no. So the man is going to take us through this one. Uh, so if you want to copy this thing, it's fine. I'll screenshot it right now. Uh, but then this is important because nobody's taking us through this one and it's supposed to complete it. Um, so that you then a badge and and then we can see the badge and then you can get um, I mean branded fabric share delivered to you. Yeah. Yes, yes. So yes, I'm gonna say as soon as you complete the first code lab uh, and the and the first playlist, you um you 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 sort of like see uh the badges added to your your google or dev profile right so you first off you first have to create, create the profile and then you complete the code lab 
complete the code lab, yeah, and then you complete the playlist. Um, so all that three shouldn't use these three badges. Yeah. Um, and then you're supposed to sort of like take a screenshot of your uh, your Google Dev profile, the, the badges, complete the badges, and then um, you're supposed to sort of like share that on, on Twitter. Yeah. And then we would send you a DM collecting your home address, your, your address where we should deliver the um, five t shirt to. Um, yeah, yeah, that's about it. Right. So, 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 uh, Google Dev Dev profile, take a screenshot of your Google Dev Dev profile with your badges completed, and then you share on Twitter using the following hashtags. So, I'm going to, I'm going to let this stay here for a while. Oh, and, and again, I'm definitely going to go through the same slides um, at the end of this event, this webinar. Um, and then, so if you, if you do all of this, we are going to sort of like send you a DM and send you a t-shirt. Yeah, yeah, a t-shirt like this. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess, brother. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Um, so up next is um, Femme Taiwo. Yeah. Um, yeah, so up next is Femme Taiwo. Um, so just... Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I like to confirm that everyone can hear me. Yes, clearly. Fantastic. All right. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Femi Taiwo, and um, I'm a Google Developer Expert for the Cloud Platform. And today I'm talking about Firebase, um, what it is, what it can do and some of the new and exciting features that was announced by Google at the recently concluded Firebase Summit in Spain. I'm pretty excited to talk about them and I'm very excited to have you here uh, for this webinar. So what is Firebase? Firebase is an application development platform built by Google with a mission to help app developers, large teams or small teams succeed with their products. And Firebase does this by its life cycle and making it easier to solve. And it does this by providing more information about your products or providing tools to handle complex problems like security or network connectivity when storing data. Firebase is divided into three main categories of tools each with specific goals. And the first category is getting processes easier. The second is for providing or for improving app quality by helping you catch issues early and fixing them very quickly. And the third is helping you grow your app by understanding how other people are using it and engaging them in a meaningful way. As you can see here, there are almost 20 different products within Firebase. How that may seem like a lot, and I'm going to briefly discuss each one of them, you can mix and match any one of those features for your app. 
the goal isn't to overwhelm you with features, but rather to let you know what is available when you need it. Now, Fabis has provided a variety of SDKs, iOS, Android, Web, C++, and Unity, to help developers use these tools quickly and easily. For detailed explanations on how to use these SDKs, a link to in-depth resources will be shared at the end of today's sessions. So I will share them at the end of my session, or then I can also share them by email to anyone who registered for this specific event or webinar. And as mentioned earlier, Fabi's products are divided into three main groups. The first set we'll go over are the backend as a database, oh sorry, backend as a service product, which will help you build apps faster and more easily. One of the hardest things to get correct in an app is security. Luckily, Firebase has you covered when it comes to protecting your users' data. There's a Firebase Auth, which is an out-of-box authentication user interface that is optimized to give you or you give your users the best experience when logging into your app. And Firebase Authentication helps a, helps you enable authentication with a number of different third-party identity providers, including Facebook, Twitter, Microsoft, GitHub, Yahoo, and even more. And that is also in addition to Google's own identity services. You can also support custom email and password solutions, anonymous accounts, and phone number authentication. You can also allow users to link all their accounts together so they can sign with either one at any point in time and they will be logged into the same user account. And once your user signs into any of these services, Firebase assigns that user a record within its system. This includes a unique user ID and a signed token. So you get a consistent representation of those users and one that you can use against both Firebase services and your own custom servers, no matter how they sign in. There's a Cloud Firestore and it's a database tool that allows you to group data using, using document collection structures for straightforward access. And that data is stored and synchronized between users and devices at a global scale using a cloud-hosted NoSQL database. And it supports basic queries in addition to direct data access. The goal of Cloud Firestore is to provide a backend data storage solution without having to go through the tedious process of setting up your own database server, authentication schema, endpoints for a REST API, and everything else that goes along with building a typical database infrastructure. Most importantly, Cloud Firestore will automatically scale with your apps. And as your app becomes more popular, and I hope it does, Additional machines will be added to your project. So you do not need to worry about failing to support your users based on traffic, based on scaling, based on requests. It also provides access to an offline version of your data. So if your user happens to lose internet connection while using your app, they can still access the data. And that even works on mobile and works on the web. Now, why Cloud Firestore is great, it's not only a solution available for storing your data with Firebase. The database, real-time database, uses a simple JSON tree structure to store and access data. It's more lightweight than Cloud Firestore and offers many advantages as well, such as real-time synchronization or real-time updates, 
handle it offline because it provides offline support and scalability. And in addition, Firebase real-time database supports the ability to know when your users are connected to the database and can be used in conjunction with Firestore as each can serve its own unique purpose within your apps. Now, although the real-time, the Firebase real-time database and Cloud Firestore are great for storing primitive data or more primitive data, sometimes you need to store and serve user-generated content such as images, audio files, or documents directly within your mobile app. Using cloud storage for Firebase, you can do exactly this with some additional features to make your app even more robust. Uploads and downloads are handled automatically by cloud storage SDK, and they're also resumable, making them more resilient to changes in network connectivity when the user's connection is disrupted during an upload. And if that happens, the SDK will automatically retry and resume without you having to do that yourself. And this, is, well, this can be very critical when dealing with the kind of network conditions that we often encounter on mobile devices, regardless of where you are. And downloading content uses a similarly robust system allowing users to receive their data once a connection is reestablished successfully. And once that content is uploaded, it can be shared with other users of your app using the same SDK. And since you will run, well, since you're likely to run into situations where only certain users should be able to see or upload specific content, you can use Firebase's security rule system along with Firebase authentication to restrict content according to your app's requirements. And there's also cloud functions for Firebase. Cloud functions are single purpose JavaScript functions that are executed in a secure, managed Node.js environment within your Firebase project. With this, you can handle complex logical operations from within Firebase, such as performing operations on a Firebase database or interacting with various other Google or external services, like sending SMS, confirming an email, or dispatching, sorry, confirming um, an email address if you wanted to do that, confirming a payment, or dispatching an email. And cloud, cloud functions can respond to events generated by other Firebase project features, such as when a user logs in for the first time, or when users, or when users upload files to the Firebase storage. You can also link it to Google Analytics. So when an event happens on Google Analytics, you can trigger an event or trigger a cloud function. If you want, you can trigger this cloud functions directly via HTTP if you want to call a particular function directly to carry out a particular task. And like everything in Firebase, cloud functions will automatically scale to meet user demand. That means that even if your app is on the overnight success, Firebase has you covered. Thankfully, fortunately, you also only pay for services that you use. So if you scale down under a set quota, you don't pay anything for cloud functions at all. It will be free. Sometimes you just want or you need a solution to a common problem. Instead of writing a cloud function to do it yourself, you can use Firebase extensions. Firebase extensions are a collection of pre-made configurable functions to handle common use cases, like resizing uploaded images, sending emails, or translating text to multiple or different languages. Firebase extensions 
on the Firebase documentations page or directly from the extensions page on the Firebase console. With amazing front-end frameworks like Angular, Vue.js, or Polymer, you can build rich app-like websites with just HTML, JavaScript, and CSS, and host them on Firebase Hosting. Firebase Hosting is a developer-focused, static web provider that is fast, secure, and reliable. Your content is cached using solid-state drives or SSD, across the world on a CDN and edge servers, and it's also served by SSL. And across the world, Google has hundreds of these edge servers, so your users will be close to one or more of them, sending your content to them really fast and quickly. So no matter where, you're, where in your world, where in the world your users are, you can expect them to receive your web page or your PWA, that's your progressive web app, quickly and securely. If you haven't heard about progressive web apps, just search online for PWA or progressive web apps to learn about it. Firebase hosting is easy to use, so you can deploy a web page with a single command from the Firebase command line interface. The Firebase ML kit allows mobile developers to enhance their app's user experience by applying machine learning models to better serve those users. By providing both cloud-based and device-based pre-trained models for common mobile use cases, MLKit allows developers without machine learning expertise to add complex features to their apps. And if you have already trained your own custom model, you can use MLKit to host and serve it using the Firebase SDK, cutting out a lot of complexity of your backend. And I'll talk a little bit more about this. The MLKit provides a variety of models that can run the device in the cloud or both. And the MLKit models fall into two categories, vision and natural language processing, NLP. The vision models will allow developers to create apps or create a feature to scan barcodes, detect faces, label objects such as fruits, cars, houses, um, devices, and to also label landmarks. But if you want, read text. So you can use it for OCR. The natural language processing models can take reading text a step further by recognizing the language and translating it automatically to a different language or to even generate smart replies based on the content that is read. These tools become even more powerful when combined with additional logic, such as augmenting faces, augmenting faces, or triggering actions for a specific barcode. With the ability to expand with this, with custom models, the possible offerings from developers grows exponentially. Now, now that you're familiar with all of the backend as a service products that we've gone through, you can start to see the real value of Firebase comes from the fact that everything fits together to help you solve your day-to-day -day development problems. And again, you can mix and match these things as you desire. Firestore and functions will integrate seamlessly with authentication. Security rules will help you make sure that users are only accessing content that is pertinent to them. And data in Firebase storage can be referenced by our databases to name just a few examples. Combined, Firebase provides a powerful tool without a lot of complexity or overhead. Now that we have discussed the tools available to help you build great apps, we can now dig into how Firebase enables developers to understand how their users are interacting with them 
and improve app stability for a better experience. As much as we would love to believe that our apps are perfect, everyone knows that they can crash in a variety of glorious ways. Tracking what crashed and why, as well as how to prioritize crashes for fixing, can be difficult and time consuming. I know this for a fact, I'm a developer as well. That's where Firebase Crashlytics comes in. Firebase Crashlytics helps mitigate some of this frustration by automatically collecting, analyzing, and organizing your crash reports with a simple Gradle import on Android or a CocoaPod install on iOS. And it provides a dashboard that shows crashes ranked by overall impact and also intelligently groups these crashes by app version and provides you stack traces you can easily look at to figure out what is going on. And in addition, you can set up alerts to inform you of any sudden defects when you do a new release, as an example. Non-fatal errors can be more difficult to track down than a full crash. And you can also log these ones and track them on the Firebase Crashlytics dashboard. If you're using the Android NDK, native C++ errors can also be reported to Firebase Crashlytics, making it easier to solve lower level Android issues. However, not every error on your app will be a crash or a failure. Sometimes things will just be slow due to device, network, or location issues. Firebase Performance was created to help you in these situations by logging start and network licenses, as well as allowing you to record custom performance metrics. These metrics are then reported back through the Firebase Performance Dashboard. And they can be grouped by country, device type, app version, operating system version, and other things, providing with useful insights into the performance of your app. And the Firebase Performance works not only on mobile apps, but it's also the only product in the industry that currently provides real user metrics for free. Now, many of us uh, building apps probably only have access to a few devices, maybe a couple of Android devices, two, three, or four, and iOS devices as well. But we know that our apps will be used on a variety of device types, sizes, and operating systems. And you want your app to provide the same amazing experience for every user, regardless of their hardware, or software that they are running on their devices, software version they're running on their devices. That said, being able to test every possible device and operating system combination is cost prohibitive, even for the most tenacious developers or quality assurance teams. That's why Firebase built Firebase Test Lab. The Firebase Test Lab makes it easy and affordable to test your app with a variety of devices and ensures that your app works great for all your users. It consists of a massive selection of different devices running various operating systems, and each is hosted in the cloud. And you can do your testing in many ways. The easiest way to test your app is to run a robot test. This is an intelligent automated test that crawls your app to discover and exercise its various features and does not require any additional code from you. You can also simulate specific test cases by recording interactions when you're using your app and allowing it to be replicated on other devices in the test lab. Now, once these tests have been completed, each device used will provide reports with screenshots device logs, and any crashes that have occurred during this test process. And it can be combined with other things like crashlytics, so you can monitor what's going on. 
You can upload and test your apps using the Firebase console or the CLI or with your CI CD tool, your continuous integration servers, or by deploying an APK using your Android Studio, or for Android apps using the Google Play developer console and special automated launch tests for apps, either on the alpha or beta channel. It's really up to you. Now we're on the final group of products from Firebase, and these help developers to grow their user base and engage them in a very meaningful way. <clears throat> Google Analytics for Firebase is at the heart of the features that helps developers grow their apps. It allows developers to measure up to 500 different predefined events or custom events with up to 25 user properties per event. And Google Analytics will automatically capture events, over 15 events, sorry, including when a user uninstalls the app, so you know. Information about demographics, retention, engagement, and revenue is automatically collected in order to help you gain valuable insight into your apps. The best part of this is that all of analytics is free, completely free with unlimited use. So you only need to focus on how you can improve your apps. And if you want, you can export your data, all of your collected data into BigQuery which allows you to pull apart the data and analyze it in new and useful ways based on your own data requirements. Firebase dynamic links would allow you to provide custom URLs that would, for example, launch a particular screen within your app. For example, you can design a game and provide a dynamic link such that when your users, or when, you're, when, you, when a user decides to share or invite their friend to join them in a game of chess or in a game of drafts or words with friends, as an example, clicking on that link would automatically allow them to install the app. And once they've installed the app and the app is launched, they will be taken directly to that specific game screen that you want with their friend waiting for them. And all the stats for the dynamic links, what is a click on it, how many times, which ones have been ignored, it's going to be available on Google Analytics. So you can have additional valuable insight into how the apps is behaving. So sometimes you want to send push notifications to users to notify them about specific events, or promos or information or a message from a friend. And that's where Firebase Cloud Messaging comes in. And the same API works across Android, iOS, and the web. And you can target specific people or specific groups of people or specific people in a specific town or a specific age group. Firebase Cloud Messaging is very powerful and delivers hundreds of billions of messages every single day. And it's an excellent way to interact with your users and encourage engagement. Sometimes you want to store configuration values and present them to specific users based on their profile. And you want to be able to update this remotely. An example of that is you want to change the color theme for those in Nigeria to green, white, green when it's Independence Day. And it could be Independence Day or it could be uh, Independence Day in two countries at the same time. And you want to provide specific themes to those users without affecting the other person and affecting other people across the world. Remote Config can help you do that. It provides a simple key store value that stays in the cloud. And you can deploy these changes in a matter of minutes. And you can use this to provide a form of A-B testing to target specific audiences or update content for a specific or a particular audience.
And again, still talking about A-B testing. You can easily do this using the Firebase Remote Config by mixing it with Cloud Messaging and Google Analytics so that you can determine or design intricate experiments in your mobile apps. You can use it to split up your audience into different groups and make sure they are seeing the correct version of the app. Firebase will then analyze any received data so you can be confident that the results you are seeing are due to your changes and not a random chance. A bit of Bayesian statistics comes into use there, actually. Now, while analytics are great for knowing what your users have already done in your app, you may want to tailor the experience for users based on what they will most likely do next. Such as making purchases or uninstalling your app. And it does that by using, by studying their past behaviors or past behaviors of other users. Firebase predictions will group users or can group users to audiences based on their expected behavior by using, by using machine learning models. If a user is likely to stop using your app, you can use remote config to offer them something that re-engages them or rewards them for being a valued customer. If you use notifications in your app, predictions will help you know which users are least likely to open them. So you only notify those that are likely to open it and you don't bug those who, won't, who are likely not to open it. And by using this, you can avoid providing a negative experience for your users by annoying them with another new notification. And the predictions automatically refresh every single day. So you can personalize your in-app experiences based on changing user trends. Now that you know the various features of Firebase, if you want to take a deep dive into them, there's a lot of great documentation available at Firebase dot google.com slash docs and also the official blog at firebase.googleblog.com again there's a lot of great documentation you can find it by visiting firebase.google.com slash docs and you can follow the blog as well on firebase.googleblog.com there are also lots of videos co covering various um, topics from the Firebase team at youtube.com slash user slash Firebase. You can also follow Firebase, also follow Firebase on Twitter. Um, thank you so much for listening. My name is Femi Tyro. You can reach out to me via DM or mention me on Twitter uh, at DF Tyro. Thank you for coming. I'm going to hand over now to Ola Inka to, for the next session that we're taking. Thank you so much. I'll be happy to answer any questions on the Q&A. Just drop it in the Q&A section on the Zoom channel. Thank you. Ola Inka, over to you. Yeah. Um, thank you so much. Um, OK, OK. So, so next up um, is Imana. Uh, and Imana is sort of like taking us through the um, Firebase for Web Good Lab. Um, so, over to you, Mara. So, yes, uh, thank you. Ah, very nice talk, Femi. Thank you. Okay, yes, yeah, so, oh, you're welcome. So, um, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Bakari Manuel, and I will be covering the technical um, parts of. Um, of this and giving an introduction into Firebase and how to get started with Firebase and um, all of that. So let me um, find the right screen, just a bit. Why is it opening that? Let's see the other Okay, just a moment. Let me try it again. Share window. Get some more. 
Mm. Seems to be rather picky on. Okay, yes, so we're good. Um, can you see my screen? Um, is it clear? Hello? Yes, it's um, pretty clear, Bakari. It's pretty okay, good. Cool. Oh, cool. So let me get started. Turn on. Um, okay, yes, cool. So today I'm basically just going to be covering up on the um, technical details of Firebase Web. So Firebase is available on a lot of platforms, as Fermi Tower had explained. But on a web platform, we can all get started by following this code lab. Um, I will be sending that to the group chat now. Oh yes, oh yes, Olanka has sent that to the group chat um, likewise. So, so, so what I'm basically going to be covering on is just a very, very um, short session on how to get started with Firebase. Uh, those of us who um, are on our laptops, we can likewise follow up um, along the same side and ask any questions that um, we'd be open to. Okay, so um, so basically, um, Firebase is used to create interactive web applications. Um, in a case where you have a lot of functionality, but you're looking for how to um, integrate it without actually building it, Firebase is like a managed platform to get all of that done, um, noting from all the feature sets that Fermi Tyrod explained. So um, in this case, we want to build a simple RSVP app um, with some level of um, functionality like auth, um, we're also going to add in like basic chats, peer-to-peer um, -peer communication, um, some level of um, authentication, and then ability to then have like guest rooms where everyone can chat and all that. Um, um, what we're going to be having here is um, basically a code lab. Everything is managed by Stack Blitz. Um, Stack Blitz is an online editor that you can use to build them web applications. But in this case, we'll be using it to manage our Firebase um, web and JavaScript um, setup and everything. So to get started, we can all open this link um, to visit um, the website. Um, I hope everyone can still see my screen fine. Um, audio check is all good. Okay, cool then. So, so in this case right now, what we have here is a, what we have here right now is just a very, very simple example of the web application before we edit it. But to actually get started with this, what we're going to do is that we're going to um, change this to basically be um, the one for um, our own. Okay, okay so, so currently what we're going to do right now is that we're going to then um, fork the application first of all. Um, so when you basically fork the application, um, you are going to create your own version of it that you can edit. Um, to actually test out editing, we can come here and type in something like October 20, and then we should see it live reload to, to October 20. Yeah? If I change this to cycle, then it should automatically reload and then we see cycle. So stack bits enables us to have this very, very interactive um, showcase of like um, our changes. So going back to this, um, I'm then going to continue um, side by side. So after you forked the application, then we can then go back down to now getting the event information worked out. Let me move this up here. So when I click on next, yes, um, we're basically going to see some details that we need to do on stack blitz, yeah? We need to edit an index to HTML page. Yes. We need to edit an index to HTML page. Um, and we need to add in this set of HTML down right in the application. Yeah. So um, so like all of this has already been added for us, um, which is right here. Everything is already embedded in here and the app size. So we don't need to touch anything. Um, all the defaults and code has already been added for us. The next thing that we then need to understand is setting up your Firebase project. So um, Firebase is a managed platform by Google. So that means that for every single application that you build on it, you need to have a project that you can link down to that application, yes? So if I open this up, it's basically going to open up a console link, um, which then takes into like a dashboard where I can view Firebase. Um, for those of us who might not 
have the need to, we can always go to firebase.google.com and likewise view the um, page where like they explain all the features of, um, of uh, Firebase and Zenfermi type we already did. So the console is the dashboard and I'd already gone ahead to create um, um, a code lab for this particular one, which is called Firebase Cloud Code Lab. But I would still be setting up everything as though I were just starting up the application. Yes. Um, so, the, so like, if you go back to the code lab, we'll see that we're meant to create a Firebase Web Code Lab, um, which um, I feel I should do again. So let me delete this, or I'll create another one. Um, and name it Firebase Code Lab 2. Makes a lot more sense. So in this case right now, I'm going to create another code lab, yeah? And I'm going to name it Firebase Code, Firebase. Let's follow the naming conventions. So Firebase Web Code Lab, then I'll add dash two. So Firebase Web, we have Code Lab dash two, yeah? So when I continue with this, going to ask me whether I want to enable um, Google Analytics. So um, Google Analytics allows you to um, do things like cloud predictions, in-app messaging, similar to um, all the things that Frank Tyra already explained. So most times it's always best to leave it on um, so that you can at least um, have an idea of the user activity on your website. Yes. So the next thing that we then want to do is that we then want to configure a Google Analytics account. So you can create one likewise if you don't have one. But well, I had already gone ahead to create one for this particular um, tutorial. So I need my Firebase Code Lab Analytics. So if you like, you can change yours. Um, from there, that's about it. Firebase is rather easy to get started with. And then once you've done that, you basically just have the entire project set up. So from here, while this is now, I'm to explain the process, right? You want to go to the project and create a, you want to go to the five console of five or google.com link and create a project. You have different features that you want to enable, but you just want to create a project from there. So you enable Google Analytics, create a Google Analytics console, and then your project will be fired up for you instantly. And then from there, we can continue. Then we get to this dashboard, which is nice and fancy. It has a couple um, of the applications that we can use, ML kit, cloud functions, authentication, quite a lot of features. So going back to the code lab, the next thing that we need to do is to build an authentication into our web application. Because you know, we want to actually allow users to be able to know an RSVP on our application now. We need to know who they are, like identify them. So to do that, we basically go into the Firebase console again, and we enable authentication. So from my dashboard, um, there are quite a lot of features here, but if you look to your top left corner, you see a part called authentication. If you click on that, you basically have access to various um, signing methods you get. So in this case right now, we want to enable email and password because that's what we're using for this tutorial. Although you can use many others, you can use phone, you can use Google, you can use Play Games, you can use Facebook, Twitter, GitHub. Yahoo, Microsoft, Apple, there's like a ton of them that you can basically apply your application. In this case, we won't be enabling the passwordless sign-in because you know, like we want to basically um, use an email and password for our users. But you can likewise create all of this and more using anything that you want. Um, so once we've enabled that, yes, we can then go down and also enable Firestore. So as um, Trent already explained, Firestore is a database a new SQL database that we can use to manage our fire data applications, yeah? Um, not real time, just um, for storing our data, yeah? Um, so to do that, we go to the database side, which is also just right below authentication to the top left corner. And then in that section, we then get access to the Firestore console. We click on create database. We'll start it in test mode. Because in test mode, like we're just basically demoing the application. Although if you are going to be running this as a full blown application, you should run in production mode. So we continue with that. We set like the cloud faster location. Normally this, you can leave it as the default. Although if you have um, concerns about where your application is hosted as to where you're using it, you can change it. But for me, I don't really um, care. I'm just going to deploy it in the US central region. And then from there, it's going to then um, provision the Cloud Firestore instance, then we can now um, use that later on. So 
as always, that's in test mode. You can configure the location. And then we're done with two to five minutes. Nothing too much. So Firebase eases out a lot of the technical stress. So for those of us who have written applications, we understand the work that goes into setting up a database, configuring a schema, even just deploying authentication. All of this is very, very simplified with um, Firebase. So from there, we continue on, and this is where we actually start you know, writing code, or in this case, copying and pasting code. Um, so uh, in this case, we're going to be pasting all of this in the index.js file. For those of us who are not familiar with JavaScript, just understand that we're just importing um, things that we want to use later on. For those that are more convenient with JavaScript, to understand that this is just us importing dependencies. Yeah. So we continue this and then we go down to the index.js file as the guide clearly outlined. So at the top of the index file, because you know it's dependencies, we are going to paste all of that in. But they have already been imported for us in this code lab. So like we can basically leave this out of that process. Um, we can then continue to go register a web application because you know, this application is a web application, yes? And then if you notice, you basically see all the parts where um, they have been outlined. Um, so in this case, we are going to just do that. So let's continue with that. So we're going to move on to here, web app, and click here. Sorry, so we're going to go to the Firebase console. We're going to go to authentic, to the project overview. And we're going to click on add application. So here we're going to click on this third icon, which is right in the center of the page, top center of the page, web. Once we click on web, we're going to then have this. So in this case, I'm going to configure it, as I said, using web app. Um, you can enable Firebase hosting if you want to, or you can leave it out. And in this case, I'm going to leave it out. Yes. And I'm then going to continue with the, with the entire um, process, right? So um, I'm going to move this down a bit. And then I'm going to click on here. So in this web app place, we're going to then click on the register application side. And once we click on register application, it's going to give us a couple options for um, using it. So in this case, we have like a couple things, you know, a couple scripts, and then we have this, right? So this configuration is what we're then going to add into our application because most of all this boilerplate code regarding like importing the scripts have already been added for us. So if you go into the index, the JavaScript part, you see here where, you know, you can add your project configuration objects, or in this case, config to put it simply and then we can add that in uh, in this case i'm going to comment out firebase analytics because this firebase version does not support analytics for those of us who might enable this we might come across that error um, where firebase analytics is not a function although you can fix that by um, changing the version in the package.json but i'd rather leave that for viewers um, um what do you call it attention so in this case we'll comment this out so that you know we can then um, continue um we'll save it um, most times you don't need to save because the live editing sample is already here. So let's continue, right? So after we've done that and we've pasted all our configurations in, then um, we can then proceed to the next part of this, which is authenticating with signing. Yeah. So most of all the things that we've done before is just setting up our Firebase project, including credentials so that we can have access to that particular Firebase project and all of that. So Right now, we're going to just be um, adding in the authentication boilerplate. So we go back to the same application, yeah? They said at the bottom right of the page, copy and paste this in. You know, it's already here, you could uncomment it, but I'm just going to copy and paste it in. So we go back again. After you've copied and pasted in the authentication UI, which is going to allow us login, we can then proceed to the index.html file, yeah? And we can add in this particular HTML. So this is where the authentication um, HTML is going to be embedded and all the JavaScript for it is going to be working on. So index to HTML, we have the event details container, we have all of this. We have the Firebase auth container right here. So if I paste this in, you notice that we have the starter SVP and the, the authentication 
container. Although I'm going to delete this because it's duplicate. Yeah. And then from there, we'll see it live the load also, and then we can see how RS will be got. Although there's no functionality on it, but you know, it's starting. So to continue, we then add the JavaScript to you know, trigger in Firebase so that it can then ask the user to log in. So we go back again, we copy and paste that same sample of code, although this time in our JavaScript, we paste it at the bottom because you know, we continue in that manner. The start RSVP button has already been defined for us here. So we don't need to really define it. But for those who are more, who don't know where all the, all of these are, they're all defined up here. So this is start RSVP button uh, by referencing the ID, which is, you know, right here. So now that we've added it in, we can save if you want to. And if I click on this button now, you see that now we have this sign in with email function. So I'm going to just type in my email, you know, real quick. And then from there, if I click next, I'm going to put in my first and my last name, which is Bakri Manu. I'm going to put in a password, Google can do that for me, and save, right? So once I save, um, you notice that it's all gone through, yeah? Which is what the UI is supposed to tell us. But then if we go back to our Firebase console, yes, and I continue to the console, and I click on authentication, right? then you're going to see my exact email and password right here. I can likewise open it. Uh, you can likewise see the user ID that I have. The password is left to me. Um, if I view all of this, this is why I can use to confirm the password, all of that. So it's, you can see how easy it was to just configure authentication. Although we can't really see that in the application yet, but we'll come across that. But this just gives you an overview of how easy it is to just configure authentication on Firebase. To change that so that we, you know, we can know when we're logged in or not, we can you know, copy some other code that's basically going to tell us when the user is logged in so that we can change the text in the bottom, yeah? So, to, so as usual, at the bottom of the page, we paste this in, right? And we save it so that you know, we can be able to tell when the user has logged in or not. And if you notice, this right now is showing logouts, yeah? Uh, so this one right now is showing logout because we've already what we have authentication. Normally, the reason why it's sign in because in this case we've not yet disabled um, this from triggering when the user is logged in. Although we can easily add that and we'll do that in a bit. So from here right now we go back and edit that starter SVP button, which controls like when the UI for login comes in. So we'll copy it and then we'll paste it in here. We'll override this guy. And then once we do that, it's going to reload again. And then we'll notice that when we have logout, yes, um, and I click on logout, now it logs me out. If I try to RSVP again, and I type in the username, and I type in the password, then I'm logged back in again, as easy as that. I didn't need to write any code. I didn't need to build any APIs. Everything just came out of the box with Firebase. So I can save this, and then we continue on to the next part, right? which is um, adding in a chat. So you can see that how easy it was to just set up authentication. We didn't have to do any work. Everything was pretty much straightforward. So in this case, we want to build in something new, something like a chat, um, like basically just like a chat desk, right? Someone comes into the page, they want to be able to send messages, receive messages, similar to how you have like a normal board or like meetup and all that. So what we're going to do here is that we're going to, as done before, we're going to copy some code, as usual, um, following up on Firestore. So Cloud Firestore is a database that we configured as you store um, JSON in the database. Um, it's not the real-time database, although Firestore enables you to store things like NoSQL, so you don't need the schema. What you pass in is what you get at the end of the day. So um, to start with this section, we copy this HTML, yes? This HTML at the first bottom under the add messages to Firestore dashboard. We come down to the index.html page, which we've had before. And then we paste it right at the bottom, which is right here. Although you notice that the container for that has already been added, so we delete that so that you know, we don't have any duplicates. And you notice that here we now have a very, very fancy text box and button to send our messages. So um, from there, as you see here, 
Once we click send, it should what add the contact message to the guest book, which is on Firestore. So to do this, we um, are going to add functionality that whenever the form is submitted, then Firestore should store these details. And then these are the parts, this is the JSON that should be added to that particular collection. So um, collections on Firestore are like tables in um, SQL. You can think about it that way. So for those of us who have used MongoDB um, or NoSQL databases, collections are tables in the NoSQL space. So as usual, we copy that, we paste it right at the bottom of the index adjacent page and then we reload. Right? So in this case right now, let me try and send a message. I'm going to send, hello, this is the cloud. This is the Firebase study jam. Study jam. Yeah? So if I send this, um, it just sends, but if we go to this particular section of the database and we check out this, we see that we now have this guest book. This is the temporary ID for my message. And this is the message I just typed in. So just like that, we've been able to add in almost live data. We can also update it if we want to. So it's not like it's completely um, set, right? You can see my name, which is from the authentication details that I had. You can get the timestamp for when I sent the message and my user ID on authentication. So directly with this, I can link both my ID, user ID, and my name to that. So let's go back, right? And let's continue with the sample. So in this case, right now, we want to change it and only add the details for the guest book to users that are currently signed in. Yes. So let's continue with that. This. So let's continue with that, yeah? So in this case right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste the same JavaScript, yeah? you notice that this is similar to this. So I'm going to delete this, yeah? So that we can have this working now. So in this case right now, what this is trying to say is that whenever the user is logged in, then show this discussion page if not, they should. So if I log out, you see that it's gone. If I log back in again, you see that it comes back. Yeah, precisely like that. So that's just what we just added. So just like that, we've managed our entire state with Firebase authentication. Um, and then to then continue, we'll then what, we're then going to now start reading our messages. So all the messages that I've sent before, and I want to be able to see them. So in this case, what I'm going to add right now is exactly like before, we're adding a, what, a guest book section in this HTML path. Um, so you notice this is the guest book container. Yeah, this is the guest book container, this discussion, this is the form. We are going to add the guest book section just right under the form. Yes. So if you place that under, you shouldn't see it because there's nothing inside it. So we we'll added it. So to continue, we're then going to now fetch all the data that we kept in the collections, order them by when they were sent, and then add them to the guest book um, HTML. So this on snapshots, it just basically takes a, um, so the snapshot basically just looks into your collection, sees all the data that is there, and pulls it out at that instant in time. So there's no real-time activity, it's just you just fetching it at that particular time. So to do this, we go back to our index.js file and then we paste this in, you know, um, so we can comment this personally, which is what? Fetch messages from Firestore. Yeah. And then once we've done this, then we basically then have access to this. And down here, we can see my very, very nice message. Hello, this is the Firebase to the jam. Hello, then I can then put another message like, uh, okay, yeah, this is me testing. This is me testing it again. Right? And once I send this, you see that it shows up just exactly as before. So in this case right now, what we're, what we're not having is now kind of like interactivity, yeah? So when I send the message, it gets embedded here, and all these details are from the Firebase collection. Because if I go back here, and I check here again, you notice that I also then have that same message embedded there. If this application were online, everyone can keep posting messages and see it's all right there. So, the, so this is synchronizing messages and it's providing us details, yeah? And this will basically sync in real time across times. So let's now go back and let's now continue and set up basic security rules, yeah? 
So, um, so CloudFast and in test mode is open for reads and writes. It means that anyone can read and write to it. But in this case right now, we want to be able to control access. So this is more of the security part. Um, so this security section is on Cloud Firestore. So this is basically like us configuring, okay, fine. Um, we want to be able to know who can access what, who can read what from our database, all of these things. So it's more, like, it's more like an access control feature on Firestore that enables us to do this. So in this case right now, all, all we're going to do is that we're just going to copy this rule. And what it's really saying that for any document on that guest book where entry is a particular ID, um, every, you can read provided you are authenticated and you can write provided you are the one that is actually what, um, the, you are the one that owns that particular resource that you are using. So I can copy this, yes and paste it in. Although you can also add in validation rules. So this validation rule is that, okay, fine. Like the name mustn't be null, the text mustn't be null, the timestamp mustn't be null. So these are just basically taking out validation from the front end and adding it to the back end. You can also add it on the front end too, but this is a much, much, much easier way because now rather than doing it from the API side, there's actually an API. You're now embedding your security validation and all that directly in your database, which is quite nice to get. So I'm basically going to copy all of this out and I'm going to paste this in. So this is saying that, okay, fine, if the user is not authenticated, don't read. If the user is authenticated, the check is valid, the text is valid, the timestamp is valid, and then also then send you those details. So from here, we can publish the security rule, and that's about it. From there, if I leave a blank message, like I'm, this shouldn't actually show, because if I were to reload this, then it shouldn't basically be stored. Uh, okay, I do this is across the tab, so it should not actually be stored. Oh yes, so it takes about a minute for this to actually become um, valid. So um, that's the reason why like, I was still able to add notes. If I wait for a bit and I try it again, it's not going to work. Um, so, um, from there, let's continue. We can now reset the listeners. So this one right now is that, okay, if I want only authenticated users to log in, and then we also then want it to be that, okay, fine. Uh, we subscribe guest book. So when you log in, you should just fetch everything for you. So this is subscribe guest book. So, um, we're going to then add this in, into here. So we just paste it right at the bottom to, um, there's really like no issue. So this one is just that whenever there's an update, update um, all the messages that we have here. And this one is for like unsubscribe. So, um, so this one is like when the user, um, what do you call it? When the user gets um, locked out, then once basically they remove that. So we paste that also in. And then we call these functions directly from the auth. So what we're doing here right now is that, okay, fine. If the user is logged out, then we should, what do you call it? Then we should subscribe to guestbook updates. If the user hasn't already paid, sorry, hasn't logged in, unsubscribe from guestbook updates, yeah? So if they are not authenticated, don't show them up, don't show them updates. If they're authenticated, show them updates. So like this right now, this is going to then allow us to do that. So, if I remove that, then we load back again. So then if I log out, nothing shows. If I log back in, then we can now get updates for this particular code lab, yeah? So uh, that's pretty much about um, setting up like a very simple application with um, Firebase. In this case right now, the last things that we can just add are possibly things like, um, okay, fine, yeah, we want to um, sign in and deploy our application on Firebase, all of that. This one is quite easy. Um, the instructions are very straightforward. Once you are signed in on Firebase, once you are signed in with the same email you deploy in Firebase, then you can deploy your application on Firebase hosting. There's a bonus track for those so like when the user RSVPs, you can add an attending um, icon and all that, and then, you know, continue the other spots. All of this is pretty much straightforward. Um, the basics are what we've already covered. So in this case, um, we've covered all of this, and um, that's basically a very, very short introduction to Firebase. Thank you. Oh, yeah, Alainka, over to you.
Okay. Um, okay, so the only thing I'll ask that is there any questions, I guess. Okay, yeah. Um, so if, 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 if there are some of like questions, um, um, I mean, you guys can sort of like ask in the Q and A session. It's just been the, the I mean, it, it, it's just down uh, among the options down, like on the. Okay, go cool, ah, yeah. cool. So, 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 uh, so, so, you, you guys can sort of like ask questions in the Q and A session. Okay, cool. Um, so, so, so we're sort of like way before time and i think it really makes sense uh so the plan was sort of like to complete this entire um, um webinar in, in one hour 30 minutes um so if we do if if, if, if we if we finish by one thirty, next next to ten. so um so, so, so i think this is sort of like final um part where where i sort of like show you guys how to um okay yes i'll just i'll just give me a moment let me just i'll just present my screen right now um uh so can i get to my screen if i just put it down there you go yeah so um yeah so um so 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 this is like final part um we we completed the intercession we've also completed the private for the lab um so i'll just show, like, show you guys what uh that we're like expecting right from um every attendee i mean from like impasse by here um so i expect everyone to sort of like have joined this group um so if you do not join this group you most definitely cannot see cannot have access to the resources uh so so you you cannot so you cannot have access to the Google Dev, um and platform um so you, you definitely want to join this group first because because the Google Dev platform is in beta state and so it's sort of like limited access and and they but, but then if you join this group um, you sort of like get the email address in which you, you join this group is going to be um, given access to the Google.dev platform. So, um, yeah, then you're supposed to sort of like complete this code lab, um, which, which, which is what Manuel just took us through right now. I'm certain that every single person follows through. Okay. Um, then you're supposed to sort of like complete this page. So, you're sort of like supposed to do this on your own. Um, now, now, the code lab and the playlist. If you complete both of them, your, your, you, 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 you can, you can sort of like create a Google, Google Dev Developer Profile, and then, and then add. I mean, I, I mean, um, so, so this is a sample of my own Google Dev Profile. So, uh, this is, this is the bad I received for creating the profile. This is the bad I received for completing the code lab. That's, that's the code lab, um, first code lab computer. So, so if you complete the five days web code lab, you'll get this one. And then if you complete that playlist, this playlist. So you want to sort of like save this link, yeah. Uh, and then if you complete this playlist, you'll get this bad for completing the playlist here. Then what we want to see, so 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 we are sort of like giving out t-shirts, and um, we are we sort of like have a number of valid fabulous t-shirts to, to give out. Um, so we are looking out for persons who you know um, get these three badges, and then take a screenshot, take a screenshot like 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 I did here, yeah. like this guy, and then share share the Twitter with the foreign hashtags, yeah. Uh, and then be sure to mention GC, this Lagos. So, so I want to maybe screenshot this somewhere. So, so if you if you do this, if you if you take a screenshot and post it on Twitter, and then we get we get the mention and mention us. What we'll do is we'll, we'll send it them 
and ask for your um, your delivery address or whatever. And then I mean, and then and then you get one 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 T-shirt like like this. Yeah. So um, so I think that's 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 I think that's that's all. Any questions? Yeah. Any questions, guys? Any questions? Any questions whatsoever? Any questions? Okay, I have one. So, like, um, so, so like after um deploying um your application of Firebase, everything, um, um, what would you then continue on, um, regarding like furthering um, the study jam? What would you advise? Um, what's the question again? It's like um after the code labs and everything um what's like the further to do on like getting used to study jam? Yes, yes, amazing question. Um, so the further thing is, uh, so so the, the, so so the, there's something like a number of resources um on the Google that um um platform so there's a group of them okay oh, oh hold on let me send the link I'll, I'll i'll send the link so so i mean after i saw like done with, with the entire code labs and stuff um the, the number of other resources you can you can you know learn with learn from check out the fabric uh, resources on google that um i mean how to how best to use fabric um i mean um sometimes will mention the law of those those links too in his in his session um and then definitely um we'll, we'll, we'll be sure to send um, links to further resources i mean after this this entire call yeah we'll just send a number of links for extra resources that stuff like can help you get started um with, with a number of amazing stuff that you can do for it. so that's our question manner Yes, yes, definitely, definitely. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So, um, yes, someone asked a question about integrating Firebase to an existing web app. Okay, um, so, so like on that end, um, when you want to use Firebase, you need to basically explain what particular features you want to use from Firebase. So, if it's authentication, then you just saw how to use the boiler plate, right? So, so, so like, if you wanted to integrate it, if you had an API before that you'd normally make API calls to, then in this case, you could just change that. So rather than it now being, um, you now trying to send JWTs, you just use Firebase on the front end to manage um, whether a JWT is set or not, or whether that authentication code is valid. And Firebase will automatically tell you whether the user is logged in or not. Um, if it's a database case like Firestore, then you replace all the API calls you make to um, get data from a database and just use Firestore directly. So it's so like, um, for your question, I'll be honest, it depends on the use case. Um, does anyone have any other questions? Okay, I think it's all cool, Alanka. Okay then. Um, so this we shall like come to the end of the webinar. Um, thank you so much, guys, for joining in. Um, really, thank you so much. Thank you so much, guys. Bye. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. Bye. So 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 like expecting the screenshots of your the screenshots for your um, Google Dev developer profiles. Yeah, and, and your badges. Um, um, I'll send an email right now to the attendees. Um, I mean, um, contain this particular information. So, yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye bye. Yeah, bye then. Bye. -bye.